Good evening, everyone. My name is Hainisha Malone. I am the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council, and we believe that we are the solution to the problems in our community. Our theme is Nothing With Us Without Us. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is sponsored by Fathers Who Care, which is a nonprofit organization located on the West Garfield side, I'm so sorry, located on the west side of Chicago within the West Garfield Park community. I'm sorry. Again, everyone, my name is Hainisha Malone and I am the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised of young people within our community whose focus and concern is youth leadership and the voice within the community to reduce senseless violence and illegal substance use. Our show will be scheduled every Thursday at 7 p.m. Again, that is every Thursday at 7 p.m. We invite viewers from all over calling in, especially young people, to come in and see what we are all about. We would like to encourage calls from people watching to leave their questions and comments at 312-738-1060. Again, that number is 312-738-1060, located on the bottom of the screen. Our show can also be viewed online at www.cantv.org backslash live. Again, that website is www.cantv.org backslash live. Everyone, I would like to introduce my guest for today, Ann Rundle, and she is a community organizer. And thank you for being on tonight's show. Again, everyone, my name is Tynesha Malone, and I am the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. You are watching a live interactive call-in television network brought to you by CanTV21. During the next 25 minutes, we are going to discuss creating opportunities in the community. We invite our viewers watching to call in with your questions and comments at 312-738-1060. Again, that number is 312-738-1060. Our phone lines are now open. So today's topic again is creating opportunities in the community. And now, Ms. Rundle, I have a few questions for you. Of course, and thank you for having me. Of course. So. Tell our audience who is Ann Rundle and what is her purpose for existing and how would you like to be um, approached like Ann or Ms. Rundle or Ms. Ann? Ann. Okay. Ann Rundle. Okay. And okay. then I don't feel like I'm so old. <laughs> right. But um, so what is my purpose for Existing. Existing. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose it's really supposed to be to doing stuff for other people or helping people. Mm -hmm. I, I like doing that, obviously, because I, right. you know, that's how I know you guys from doing the different things that I've been involved with with the Chicago Occult Foundation. I've been involved in the foundation for oh, almost the past ten years, mm -hmm. um, and it's always I always think you have to give back, you know, right. um, and if you. If you're not doing that and you're always just taking, something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. not the way I was raised, at mm -hmm. least. Yeah. So, whom do you work for and what is your job title? So, I work for a company called ACT Research mm -hmm. and we are kind of the gold standard premier for anything to do with forecasting and analysis for uh, commercial vehicles, so trucks. Mm -hmm. trucks, that down, trucks that go down the highway and haul freight, trucks that school buses, transit buses, you have it. And um, I'm involved with two special studies, either electrification right. or autonomous vehicles, so a, a truck that will drive itself without oh, a driver. Okay. So kind of cool. So what does ACT stand for? America's Commercial Transportation. Okay. And they've, we've been around for about 35 years. Really? I've worked for them for just about two years. So what is your job description? My job description, it sounds pretty cool. My title is Vice President of Electrification and oh, Autonomy. So congratulations. it sounds pretty cool. Um, but you know, my, my job is to really focus on any of our special studies that look at introducing new te technology into commercial vehicle space. Right. So when did you know you wanted to work in the business of yachts and boating? Since I younger than you, mm. younger than you, I was a kid, um, and that, you know I grew up sailing. My dad was was sailing, and I was up at Belmont and Belmont Yacob, where we were, you know, last summer with you guys. Yeah. And we we all went down to Monroe Street, and there were all these boats for the Chicago Mac race, actually. Mm -hmm. And there were all these people working on it, and I and I said, how, how do you get these jobs? How do you get a job working on a boat? Right. And I was like, that's it, man, that's it for me. And my older sister knew someone who was getting an engineering degree from University of Michigan. 
to be a, a yacht designer mm -hmm. and to be uh, you know, a naval architect. And I think I was probably about 12. And mm -hmm. I said, I, like, I'm being an engineer. I know it. I'm going to University of Michigan. I was just. Right. You just, had a plan. I had a plan. Oh, oh, yeah. I was like, you know, scary in yep. that way. <laughs> so, um, what was I? So, what? It was programs around how there are right now that you got involved in to start this when you were 12? Yeah. So, just kind of, um, and that's one of the things that the foundation wants to do, you know, expanding. Kind of how when we, we did that careers thing and then we went out sailing afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I was there during the day sailing and learning how to sail. And that's one of the, we're, we're looking at actually the foundation wants to do a community sailing organization. Yeah. And, you know, things like having you guys come down, you know, for days to learn how to sail and just enjoying the lakefront. Yeah. Like what we did last summer and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, yeah, it's. It's the best life. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I was it pretty lucky. Good, yeah. So, why are you so motivated to empower young people from the inner city communities? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm a Chicago and I grew up on the south side, mm -hmm. you know, but I grew up, so I grew up in South Shore, mm -hmm. right, you know, right along the lakefront. Yeah. Um, but everybody, not everyone gets a chance to understand what the lakefront offers. So right. you got to, you can't just sit there and say, wait a minute, you know, in our founding fathers in Chicago mm -hmm. said, we're keeping that lakefront public so that all of us can come down there. Anybody, doesn't matter if you're north side, south side, west side. Yeah. And I think that was the thing that when we first met your organization and met, you know, Reverend Jones, it was, mm -hmm. how do we do something for these kids and get them from the west side out to the lakefront and see something different? Exactly, than what they're used to. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's a lot of the stuff we do with other organizations too is, you know, I'll ask the first time, how many kids have been to the lakefront? Mm -hmm. Maybe two or three raise their hand. Yeah. You know, how many people have been on a boat? Not very many people. So, yeah. you know, our goal is to just get more and more kids out on the water, see what it's like, and see if that's something for them. Yep, and you you offer jobs as well, right? Right. I mean, that was the thing we did this 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 um, spring, mm -hmm. and so there was you know a group of you guys who came down. Yeah. But there was about six different sessions. We had the graduation two weeks ago, yep. and that was finding how to how to get trained to get a job, you know, working at a marina or working on those river boats, doing mm -hmm. things like that. Because yeah. I think it's one thing to show somebody here's the lakefront, but um, I don't know, when I was 15, I had a job. I had a summer job so I could save money to go to school. Right. So I still think you gotta have fun, but you gotta have a job. Yeah, So you there's, do. you know, and sooner or later. You gotta be yeah. a balance as well, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, why are you so passionate about working with young people from the west side of Chicago? I think it's 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 given an, a chance to kids who maybe didn't have that, don't have that chance or don't have that avenue, or don't mm -hmm. have, you know, don't see that as an opportunity. Right. And I, and I think that's, you know, and I've, I've told you guys this story before, my dad and his friend, Jack Rice, I mm -hmm. think they got out of school early. I don't think they were ditching, but anyway, mm -hmm. they, they went from Hyde Park High down to Jackson Park. Mm -hmm. And they were just kind of like, this is cool. And some, some guy said, you want to help me work on the boat? And that was it. You know, my dad was hooked. Yeah. And his dad didn't sail or didn't, what had knew nothing about boats, mm -hmm. you know, not at all. And so I think you just have to keep saying, everybody, give everybody a chance yep. to say, what about this? Exactly, because you know most people they just assume and they say, oh, they um they are they're in a certain box because you know the west side of Chicago, you know those kids they are in a certain box apart from a box that other kids with these opportunities are in. Their box is filled with all these opportunities and jobs and programs and all this stuff. But the box of the kids on the west side, they have a very empty box. So when people look look at them, they like, oh, they don't know what's going on. They don't know how to do this. They um they just stereotype them a lot and mark exactly. them as bad children, but they they're only a product of their environment. So most kids don't fall into that. I will I will not say that all kids are a product of their environment, but sometimes they are, and they label them and then they they like put them on the back burner and say, oh, we're not gonna give it to them because they're bad but they don't try to see what they have to offer or try to get them to have the opportunity to get them away from that. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you say like, okay, they don't have those opportunities because some people just see where they're from and look at like um, 
look at like they records or something and see what they have going on like in school and they say oh no he's a bad kid instead of saying okay let's get him away from the thing that's making him act that way and get him to a whole another part of the city exactly. and offer him these opportunities and these opportunities will make him see life in a different light and not make him feel like he has limited choices or limited um, opportunities, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I was really glad to hear you say that as well. I mean, and that's the thing is, because if, if you don't take a chance and you don't give somebody a chance, right. then then you don't know, you're right? Exactly. And then they're sort of stuck. It, it It's not, why, why would we want to try to help somebody who they don't need the help, right? Exactly. You know, I mean, like, that it's not There's the no same. There's no help that's needed for them, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what is the status of the careers ed slash education program that was launched last year? So, we had, um, the way we expanded it this year was to do that whole marine, what we're calling our Maritime Academy yeah. through the Chicago Yacht Club Foundation. And that is, we're team we've teamed up with Chicago Maritime School. Mm -hmm. So, you guys were out at their facility a couple times yeah. up, um, like, in displays. Yeah. And then other times there was training at the Yacht Club, and then we did that training on the river. And that was one of the things that we said, it was one thing last year to just say, well, here's some careers, but what about taking it to that next step and giving kids a chance to train to get a job, you know, at a marina or get a job, you know, on the, on the river cruise boats or yeah. get a job as a duck hand, you know, for charter boats. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing we said, let's ratchet it up. And so you were, you were in it. Um, there was Robert, Tiffany. Um, Shanisha and I'm gonna forget one. It was Robert, Trinity, Sinesia, and Diamond. Diamond, Diamond, Diamond. Yeah. Diamond. Yeah. So, you know, and that's the thing is like, that's an opportunity. So there was that. We were trying to expand that even to have another session maybe later this summer mm -hmm. to teach kids to try to get who you could get a job then in the fall working on Saturdays or Sundays. Right. But the other program which was that careers education, one where we brought in guest speakers, mm -hmm. we're either gonna start it up like right at the end of August, so it's before school starts, mm -hmm. or start it so that it's on weekends. Right. Because I've got a lot of you know, there were a number of people that wanted to speak and come right. and we only had four uh, you know, four, four Tuesdays. So right. I've got, I had to turn people away. So I'm oh, thinking okay. I want to do it either, you know, six, six different sessions or eight and maybe do it like on a Saturday. Yeah. So then there's more time to go out sailing. Yeah. yeah. So what are some other activities that young people can be involved in? Well, I, you know, I would almost come back to you and say from like those careers and educate, you know, stuff we did last time, mm -hmm. there were different ideas that we had about, you know, maybe ecology or the environment. That yeah. was one of the things that woman who came and spoke, Mila Marshall, was talking about different opportunities through, you know, just environmental. Yeah. I mean, some of it's fun, some of it's work because it's clean up beaches and stuff like that. Yeah. But that could be something. I mean, we've always trying to think of things that were involved in around around the water mm -hmm. but the other the other program that we're also trying to you know we're talking about it's in the planning stages is to try to do something like a community sailing um, program mm -hmm. and then that would be you know learn to sail yeah. so like you guys will come down you know maybe for a month you know two days every week and just have a learn to sail program yeah and bring in kids from bring in kids from the west side, bring in kids from the south side. You know, bring in kids who wouldn't otherwise even have that opportunity. That mm -hmm. So, how old do you have to be to start learning about sailing yachts, etc.? Well, um, I mean, you could. I mean, you could start actually pretty young. You know, I was thinking about this because, like, your younger sister is six, six right? Yep. She could go out on a boat, she could go sailing, yep. and you start to pick it up, you know. <clears throat> I think probably the first time I was on a boat, I was maybe probably four or five. Wow. But I didn't go to sailing school. I think you have to be maybe eight, eight nine years old to be in sailing school because they want to make sure you're responsible enough. Right, yeah. And you're not going to be goofing off because mm -hmm. you're not going to have your parents with you all the time. Right. So you could start, like, you know, you could start pretty young. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to bring up um, opportunity going on with Positive Care. They are going to do a 
internship it will be starting tomorrow but you can also you can still come in and see if you can get in it's from ages 16 to 24 um if you want any more information about that you can contact us at 773-287-5821 again that number is 212 I'm so sorry, 773-287-5821, or you can email princess.fwc at gmail.com, and you can ask her about any questions that you may have about it, the location, um, just any any question that you have pertaining to, this, to the um, internship, you can ask her, and that will be starting tomorrow, or if you have to go through the hiring process, it might start a little bit later for you. Okay, so... What, I mean, what was your favorite part about the careers thing that we did last year? I think learning about the sailboats and when we were, when we were riding them because, um, one, it was kind of scary, but it was still fun because it was the, um, what were the boats called where so they nice. can't fall at all? Like they can't. Yeah, they they're, can't, it's a keel boat, so yeah, it can't those, tip over. Yeah, the keel boats. It was, it was super interesting learning about those and learning how to, like, position the flag to where it's supposed to blow it's, it's gonna blow in the right direction to take you where you want to go because you put it in the wrong place and the wind is blowing you know blowing like um south or something and you got it facing the whole other way it's gonna take you where you don't want to go so it was interesting learning about that and learning about all the ropes that go with this and, and things like that and learning how to um navigate the boat because you can't just be all you know willy-nilly on the boat <laughs> so you gotta really like pay attention to what's going on and it was uh it was nice to learn about that um i also like hearing about um past experiences with boats and how people um drive boats all the way to like different states and they travel while they own their boats like that was super interesting to know and they say how we could we could do stuff like that and we oh, could yeah. be on the boats and do that stuff so it was really nice to hear that um also, riding the yachts were super interesting. I like riding those because I never rode, I never um, been on one before. That was like my first time being on a yacht, I think. So I was going on it, and they was telling us about the um, the um, houses that's out there that the birds always own. Oh, the cribs. The, the cribs, yeah. yeah. Cause when we, when you were with Tiffany, mm -hmm. um, and she's she's a she's a captain, she's a U.S. Coast Guard captain, yeah. and she keeps her boat at 31st Street. You guys went all the way up to the crib, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. I think you know we went like super close, but we didn't go all the way there because I think it was a lot of birds over there. Yeah, they and it was real, it was real smelly. So yeah, we think we did, we did say that. yeah, so they didn't want us to take go all the way over there. We didn't really want to go all the way over there either. So it was really interesting learning about that and learning how deep the pool, I mean, not the pool, how deep the, um, the oh, lake, lake is. is yeah. yeah, and um, how the cribs got installed because, you know, people have questions of, oh, how did they get the cribs here and how did they build them and stuff like that. So they were um, answering those questions for us. And it was really interesting to learn about that stuff and learn about um, the bridges, like the, um, the that block the water. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, the, the water of the water, uh -huh. yeah. And they were teaching us about that stuff too, so it was really interesting to learn about that stuff because I never would have knew about it. And it was actually some fundamental information that, that we had got as well. And we learned about the um, the water source for the city, how it comes from there, and how it gets like filtered and stuff. It was just a lot of stuff that they were That's talking cool. about. cool. Yeah, actually, my mom um, used to run the bacteriology labs for the city of the water. Really? Yeah. Um, and she. We used to go out once a month and take samples at all those cribs. Oh, how do they do that though? They, so there was some. But it's an in and out. Like you can go inside of there. Well, right, and they just took water, would take water samples and bring them back to the lab to analyze and mm -hmm. see, and then say, okay, how do you, how do they then change how they're treating the water? Right. Because they know what the quality of it is at the intake. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. I think that's how we get our water for yeah. drinking. I want to learn how to do that too. So, what did you learn from working with our young people last year? Um, I, you know, you guys were just really cool. Because, mm -hmm. and I, the thing that was cool to me, I need or whatever, is the first time when you, the first week that you guys came down. Well, first we we did that lakefront cruise, so I kind of met everybody, but there was a big group. Yeah. And then the next time when you guys came down, it was the first time when um, the the guest speaker was talking about getting a job to learn how to teach people to sail, uh, yeah. you know, a sailing instructor. 
And um, and then we went out on the sonars, and there was like a couple of people who were like, nah, I don't want to go out. And right. I remember Reverend Jones was like, you get in that boat. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no fooling around. Mm -hmm. And and um, and then when you guys came back, you were like, wow, like that was really yeah. cool. Everyone, yeah. even like the one young lady who didn't want to go, who like was Reverend Jones. Yeah. And then I think the thing that was so cool was that, and then the next week you guys were like, man, all right. Remember you, there was like that one woman who was the teacher. Everyone's like, okay, we're going with her. Yeah. And then you guys were oh. trying to do that racing. Who was Andy? Andy, Andy. Yeah. yeah. Andy, yeah. And then, and then you guys were like, okay, let's race the boats. You know, let's race back in. Yeah, that was fun. And I think to me that was one of the most fun things about it and rewarding was to see how each week you guys were like, man, I, we're getting this. I, I get this. Yep. Toy. And every week we, they let us do it by ourselves. They let us try to knots on our own. They not, let us learn how to, um, you know, do the, what is it called? The eight figure knot. They taught us oh, how to figure, do that. Yeah. yeah, they taught us how to do that. And like, they let us uh, sell both on our own. So it was, it was really cool being down there last summer. I think, and that was to me, was the fun part is to see that you guys started out with like, you didn't know what you were getting into, right? Exactly, you know? yeah. We, we were just like, coming down. We just signed up. We, yeah, we, we signed, signed you up. up. Reverend Jones is like, yeah, sure, we'll do this. And you guys are like, ah, that's so right. sure. Right. Yeah. But then it turned out fine. No, it was really cool. Yeah. I think that was, uh, that was sort of like, wow, it's over, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was. That's why when we said we were going to try to do something at the next level and do a Maritime Academy, and we were talking about it, like, well, where do we get a feeder group? And I'm like, I know where we get a feeder group. Mm -hmm. We get a feeder group from Reverend Jones yep. and West Garfield Park Kids, because they, they're they cool, and they'll get into it, and they'll show up, and they'll do it. And, yep. and so it was like, that was a no-brainer. Exactly. So are young people allowed to operate boats without adult supervision? Yeah, they are. I mean, it, there's always, if there's younger kids out, there's always some adult in a powerboat, you know, if you're out on sailboats, just in case there needs to be, you know, something in an emergency, just in case to rescue, mm -hmm. that we have at the Yacht Club or what we would do at the Foundation. But, um, but not, you know, no, I mean, I know kids who go sailing and they don't have, they don't worry about having an adult. Right. I, I, I mean, I, I would think that um, my parents wouldn't have let me be without an adult supervising until I was, like, in college. Right. So if anyone would like to get in contact with you to get more information about yachts and the opportunities available, how could they contact you? So um, they know how to, you all know how to get, get a hold yeah. of me, but there's, um, the Chicago Yacht Club Foundation has a website. It's www.chicagoyachtclubfoundation.org. Um, and you can and you can get um, a hold of us through that. Um, and we've just actually launched our website, our new website, and there's ways to then contact, and you can um, get it. Okay, so there, there you go. Um, and there's about us, contact us, and say you're interested in, you know, some of the youth programs, mm -hmm. and like Poofman, um, and oh, mention, that's us. yeah, yeah, we've got, yeah, and then, you know, just mention that, one, you know, you know who we are through your organization, mm -hmm. and um, absolutely, yeah, I mean, oh, we, nice. we're always, I mean, we're always looking for more kids, yeah, these with the you know? Bolts. Yeah, you were out on, those are the 420s, but we, I don't know if there's a picture of the sonars. Um, um, there you guys are. Yep. That was, was that when we were on? That's when, that was our last day. Okay. Yeah, that was our last day. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't. Or was that when? That was the, um. That was, that was when we were doing the training that Saturday. Yep, um, I think so. When yeah, Captain that's Jerry what brought was, the, yeah. um, that, the, um. Oh, the dummy to figure out if somebody fainted, how would you gonna take how care of it? How would we take care of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the end for today. Um, do they have? Is it a phone number that they could call? Is there? In case? There is. You know, there isn't exactly a phone number. There is a phone number for the yacht club. Uh huh. Three one two seven. Three one two. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'll give you. I'll give you all the information. Okay. You, you, so. Um. I don't know. But if you are just tuning in, our guest on tonight's show is Ann Rundle. 
and we are discussing creating opportunities in the community. We would like to thank our viewers for watching. For additional information about our Youth Council, please contact us at 773-287-5821. Again, that number is 773-287-5821 and ask for Miss Princess. Thank you and tune in next week, same time, same station. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming.